Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I have something interesting I want to talk about today. I'm in my Tesla Model S. This is a 2015 Tesla Model S. It's the P85D. I've owned this about three years. And I've got, uh, I don't know, 83, 84,000 miles on this car. And I've probably put, I got it at 55,000. So almost, uh, almost 30,000 miles on this in just under three years. So this generation of car has unlimited mile warranty on the drivetrain and the battery, like the motors and the battery, but it does expire after eight years. Eight years is June, I think it's June 10th, 2023 is the expiration date of my uh, battery and drivetrain warranty. And so this has had no battery failures, battery issues, or motor issues. This has had no major issues at all, this whole this car. Uh, I bought it from the original owner, and this had very few issues. And really, since I had it, it's had probably the most issues, where it's had like issues with the window regulators and door handles. You know, just, just kind of typical things. That's not that big of a deal. The real concern with these uh, Teslas, especially the older ones, this is approaching now an eight-year-old car, and that is the motors going out and or the battery kind of going out. And so that's kind of a real issue. That's a concern if you're buying a car. Uh, starting next month, I'm going to have, in less than a month, I'm going to have a car that is out of warranty for the battery and drivetrain issue. And so I'm kind of concerned about that. And so I've been doing some research on the uh, re research about like, what can you know? What what things do I need to look out for? Can I take things in now and say, hey, it's doing this or this or this, and maybe under warranty, some things can get fixed, like for the motor or the battery. Well, I was reading, and one of the issues. This is a dual motor, so it has the front motor and a rear motor, and on the all-wheel drive versions of this era, 2015, the the rear motor tends to have more failure than the front motor. The front motor is is pretty pretty robust pretty pretty reliable the rear motor can have some issues where I don't know the exact science and how how mechanically this all works out but there's a cavity in which there's a speed sensor the speed sensor spends you know senses how fast the, 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 the motor is going it translates that into the speed that, that you see miles per hour on the dash well in that cavity in which the speed sensor resides that's a sealed compartment and coolant from the motor should not enter that area and if it does over time that coolant in that in, in that cavity is going to cause the motor to kind of like burn out or fail essentially and so I was reading about that and I'm like oh I'm kind of concerned about that I've never lifted my car up I haven't like checked that speed sensor and so what I did is this car had uh, eight years of prepaid maintenance on it so every year around May, June time frame, I take this into the Tesla Service Center and they do their maintenance, the maintenance plan, which really they replace the windshield washer, uh, windshield wiper blades, they fill up the windshield washer fluid, and I think this time they like loop the brake calipers and the, the parking brake, and they check your tires. I mean, it's, it's basically nothing. I mean, if, if I didn't, if I, if it, if it wasn't prepaid, I wouldn't do it. it it's really not worth that much. But while it was in there, when I scheduled the appointment on the Tesla app, I scheduled my annual maintenance visit, and I also said, hey guys, I want you to check the speed sensor cavity on the rear motor for coolant intrusion into that cavity. And what, the reason I did that is, is if they were to find coolant in there, it means the motor is failing, essentially, and they would replace the motor. So that was kind of my purpose behind that. I'm like, okay, let's just take it and while it's in there, I'll have them do that. They did charge me for that. The original quote was around $120. And that's usually their, their labor rate here. I'm in, I'm in Utah, their labor rate, they charge around $120 per hour for labor. And that was the quote. So I took it in, they got it done the same day, which is kind of rare. I haven't had, I haven't had Tesla get things done the same day anymore, but we have a, two, two service centers in my area. So that's helping to get, to get things done faster. So I get a message on the app, say, hey, your car's ready. Nothing was found in the, in the speed sensor cavity. Only assembly lube. There was uh, no, no sign of, no sign of coolant intrusion. Uh, there was, you know, the, the speed sensor was perfectly clean. I talked to them. They're like, yeah, everything looks fine. There's no, the motor's not failing. You're, you're fine. Everything's good. And I guess that's good. That's good news that the motor's not failing. But I was kind of hoping that it like, I was kind of hoping that 
they would have found something and replaced the motor. That was the whole point of going in and doing that. So it ended up taking them a little bit longer. They did a few things. They 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 tested some software, some codes. They they checked the coolant level. They just they did a few checks just to make sure that like there was no coolant in there. I don't know if they knew that was what I was trying to do. Like I was trying to get the motor replaced because thinking that if there was coolant in the speed sensor cavity that it could be replaced. I don't know if they knew that, but I, I went about that route to, to try to get it replaced, and it's not replaced. It ended up being just over $200, like $212 or something. They probably worked on it uh, an hour and a half or something. I don't know. It was all labor charge, which, you know, so I'm out 200 bucks, $212 to get it looked at. But I'm glad that I did because, you know, at least I know now that the motor's fine for, for now. Uh, I don't, it's not like, it's not on the verge of getting uh, or going out. So I'm not gonna have to replace it hopefully anytime soon but I also don't know what to do with the battery so I've got a month left of my battery warranty if you guys have any if you guys have anything th that you know of that I could do now I'm not trying to fail my battery but I just want to know like if there's something that you can ask Tesla like hey check on this and that tends for them to look for something and that can sometimes get a battery replaced I mean I'd be interested to know what that is I I'd probably take it in before my warranty expires but the batteries had no issues at all. The 12 volt battery has been replaced a couple times. Uh, it's probably just over three and a half years. So I'm guessing the 12 volt battery is probably going to go out, um, you know, within a year or so. Which that's a simple, easy fix. But it's really the high the high voltage battery that powers the motors that I'm concerned about, and that I'd like to get replaced under warranty. But it's not looking like it's going to because I've only got a month left of warranty and. Um, you know, no symptoms, no problems. I'm not getting like that reduced power message where, you know, you're only reduced to 40 miles of range or 80 miles of range or something. So I'm having no issues or problems or symptoms. So so anyways, guys, I'm not really sure how prevalent this uh, rear motor failure is in these uh, these Model S's. I'm not sure. Uh, you hear about it on the internet. Of course, all the forums, they tell you, you know, it's all it's a problem and it's happening to all of them. That's probably not the case. So didn't happen to mine. I'm uh, just really curious to see how long the battery is going to last. You know, I, it is a little nervous to, to drive around in a, in a Tesla with no motor or battery warranty. So I guess I'll just kind of see. I'm really just, I'm really interested to see how long the battery lasts, the motor lasts without any kind of servicing. Other than that, there's really not a lot of service. This, this car has gone 84,000 miles and zero brake servicing has been re required other than just like lubing the lubing the pads the calipers things like that there's you don't have to change the pads which is which is pretty cool that haven't had to do any brake service you know there's really no regular maintenance other than just you know basic stuff tires windshield wipers windshield washer fluid cabin air filter well, guys, I want to pass this information along if your warranty is about to go out maybe have the service center check to see if your speed sensor has any signs of coolant in or around that, uh, that compartment in the, in the motor, in the rear motor, because, uh, you know, if there is, it means your motor's a, motor's a failing and will need to be replaced. And so if you can get it replaced under warranty, that's great, right? Guys, leave your comments down below. I'm curious to know if you know anything, any ways to like get these big ticket items replaced under warranty. One thing also interesting, if you take your car in for an annual maintenance visit, they don't do like a multi-point inspection like a regular car service center would do. You know, you take your car, your, your gas car into the service center to a dealership or something, you know, the, the, the technicians are checking everything, you know, mainly because they want to replace things to make money on you, right? But, um, you know, Tesla just won't, they just won't inspect things to make sure everything's okay. They figure that if there's no warning lights on the dash or no problems, then everything's fine. They don't, they're, they're not checking things preemptively to really a checkup on the car. They, they'll, they'll, you can pay for it, which is the thing's interesting. You can pay for them to go through the whole car and kind of, they'll give you an update. They'll give you some information on what they find, but it's not like a free multi-point inspection. They don't do that. I think that's interesting. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.